Since I'm more of a fire-breathing, red-headed dragon and less Rapunzel in any fairy tale, our time in Fairhope, Alabama needs to wrap up. If I stay any longer, the owner may call the cops. Welcome to Mobile, Alabama. Besides, we need to get to Mississippi. This part of the Gulf is casino country and the only gamble I take in life is with milk past the expiration date. I am in Laurel, Mississippi. Laurel, Mississippi. Now, I did not pick this stop. My girlfriends did because apparently there's some HGTV show that shot here that they want to see what Laurel looks like. I stopped watching home renovation shows a long time ago because I actually renovated my house. So I know there's no such thing as a contractor who shows up on time, is smiling, and comes in under budget. That's bullshit. So I don't watch that. And plus, who the hell has money for cable? Not me. So the only thing I actually watch on TV is I rent as they slowly come out on DVD, Game of Thrones, because people awkwardly come up to me in Walmart and tell me I look like Melisandre. And I had to find out what this lady was all about. Turns out she's a scary ginger who has severe resting bitch face and she tells all the kings what to do. And I'm like, yeah, I see the resemblance. The city's oldest first national bank has several gargantuan vaults that they foolishly let me play around in unsupervised. Judging by the sheer thickness of the door, Laurel took the security of the area's piggy banks seriously. I'm only warned that while the staff does know the combination, they've never been able to get it to work, so if I accidentally shut it or it shuts on me, I will become a part of Laurel's history for all the very worst reasons. Walking tour in hand, I trampled the very small historic and commercial district, but everywhere I went, all anyone wanted to tell me about was that damn HGTV show. If Laurel has its own story, it's now in the shadow of network television. Defeated, I went to the TV show Stars Market. I found wall-to-wall -wall branded merchandise and boxed water. Water in a box for $2.99. I'm out, Laurel. I drove three hours out of my way to get here. On the plus side, that's three extra hours I have to practice car karaoke on my way to Natchez. 300 years of history await and I will be arriving very late. Good morning. It is 6 a.m. and it's tea time at the Babe Bus because all fancy bitches start their day with tea. Can we also, uh, can we, <laughs> let's acknowledge my outfit because I'm going to go outside and be in public and so I'm trying to keep my street cred. So I have my Detroit shirt and then my Tinkerbell bathrobe and then my Wilmington Fire Department sweatpants, all in one. This is, you know those Instagram videos or pictures where the van chicks are all like hot and sexy? Like, yeah, this is the big boss. Natchez sits high on the bluffs of the mighty Mississippi. Most of the city is supported by an enormous retaining wall. Some of the houses have cliffs for front yards. That elevation provides the morning's nausea-inducing stair workout. Oh my God. Gary, that's enough of that. Let's go have some fun. But at the bottom, we find the start of our story. 
you will see all kinds of different flags as you are walking around Natchez. And I think that's because everyone was trying to get a piece of this city for throughout history, really. In the early 1700s, Natchez was colonized by the French. The Spanish got involved. After the American Revolution, the Americans ripped it back. Civil War, the Union soldiers came down, took it away from the Confederates. Everybody wanted a piece of this pie. Natchez was like the girl in high school that everyone wanted to date, but it's a port city. If you control the flow of the economy, you're the one in power. So we can see how that happened. I am going to Natchez under the hill because this whole town is built on top of this massive bluff. So down here, Natchez under the hill, this was a major port area, primarily cotton, but also human beings, right? Major slave trade going on here. Also the path to freedom. So the slaves, as I was reading this morning, I'm doing all my research, would hide out on steamboats and try to get out of Natchez, or they would forge their freedom papers and try to get out that way. My favorite little tidbit about this area is that Natchez had a bit of duality, right? So up here above the bluff where all these big beautiful mansions that we're going to see later are, where the southern plantation owners lived, that was called Natchez proper. But down here where the port was, that was called Natchez improper because that's where you had all your cargo coming in, all your saloons, and all your houses of ill repute. Scandalous. This gritty underbelly of Natchez used to be larger. The river has etched into its sides, and today, because of historic and catastrophic flooding upriver, the Mississippi is quickly running up her shores. Back up the bluff, let's head to the William Johnson house. A place I was told several states ago was an absolute must-see. William Johnson truly lived between two worlds. Everything we know about him is from his diary that he wrote in daily, the original blogger of his time, if you will. William was the product of an enslaved mother and her master. At 11, his father slash owner freed him. And by 19, William was opening up barber shops in Natchez, quickly becoming a successful businessman, even though he could not participate in the conversations happening between plantation owners in his own chairs. William bought and owned his own slaves, and if that seems mind-bending, you're not alone. It's hard to understand the mindset and context of a time period we can hardly participate in. One block away, I spot this kind of creepy looking brick building and quickly see why it has such an ominous vibe. This jail was used until the 70s and is allegedly haunted. While legitimately eerie looking, the second floor has a layout similar to many jails of the early 1900s. In these buildings, the jailer and his family lived downstairs. The wife's job was to cook all the prisoners' meals and do all their laundry. Lucky lady to marry a jailer. Modern jails look like five-star hotels compared to this era of justice. The only truly disturbing sight I find is on the third floor when I realize I'm standing on the trapdoor. Welcome to Death Row. With the other convicted watching from their cells, the condemned was placed here, the rope tightened, and the lever pulled to drop the floor. Now, dropping, not falling, means many likely did not die quickly. They were cut down from underneath. Business as usual. Today, the building is mostly municipal offices, haunted only by the sassy lady up front who laughed hysterically every time I bumped into something and nearly peed my pants. Rosemary bushes, original brick sidewalks, and curbside architectural eye candy. I could totally pull up the Bay Bus's break and stay here for quite some time. 
The historic homes of Natchez are storybooks with studs. Some, regal, like this Second Empire private home, shout out to that bodacious mansard roof. On the other end of the spectrum, bungalows like this one. Actual leaked footage of what happens when a woman gets too many 40% off coupons at Hobby Lobby. The house on Ellicott Hill is where the American flag was first raised to mark our land grab this far west. And my personal favorite, Stanton Hall. The owner instructed his builders to spare no expense. His home was to be the most magnificent. And then he died nine months later. The Lord doesn't like greed. But hey, we'll have an attitude of gratitude that in the wake of his departure, we now have a marble entrance, commanding hand-carved doors, and skyscraper columns to enjoy. I need to take a Southern Belle moment on the dearly departed's porch because my little New Jersey legs feel like they are about to fall off. I am exhausted. But we have one more mission, my absolute favorite thing to do, and we need to cross the current to complete it. I chased her up the banks of the river for a mile until she was just where I needed her to be. And as she rose, I sunk into the grass with just enough energy to hit the shutter and get mooned on the Mississippi. Mm -hmm.